evening, everybody. Good evening. Glory, glory, glory. Good evening, everybody. Awesome. Awesome evening. I don't know, is it raining <laughs> in your area? Because it's heavy here in the United States of Akure. It is heavy. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for being here tonight. My global family members. I'm excited to have you here. Thank you. Every Tuesday, you guys are here. It means a lot to me. And thank you for the feedback I get. With thousands every time. Thank you for coming. Uh oh, from everywhere. Thank you. Yes, type it. I always like to know where you are joining me from. Thank you so very much. Houston, Texas. Thank you, Nigeria. Thank you, the UK. Thank you so much. I'm sure everybody is doing very well. It's going to be awesome tonight because we're doing something, something, something. Oh, really? It's raining heavily. Malawi, we are coming. <laughs> Maryland, Tanzania. Oh, Rwanda. I miss you, Rwanda. Ooh, ooh. I oh, uh, thank you. Akure, Nigeria, the UK. God bless you all, Zimbabwe. Thank you so very much. It's going to be awesome tonight because I'm doing something very different very unusual from you know what um i always do today <laughs> united states of abuja london yola yola atlanta canada thank you thank you everybody thank you i see you let me not be mentioning names so show for me i see you thank you for being a part of this i will come reverse nigeria wash Arusha, Tanzania. Some of your the names of your cities are tongue twisting. Kaduna. This is I've been to. I'm reading yours. West Virginia, Kenya. Mm, I have friends in Kenya. Weary. I'm coming to Weary. Yes, this year, by God's grace. Thank you, everybody. If you remember how I posted the banner. For tonight's event, I said listening to the next gen. And that's what we'll be doing. Amsterdam Road Island. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you, Lagos. Thank you, Akure. Okay. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate you. Yes. Because we've always had, hey, our youth are the leaders of tomorrow. I'm glad to announce that tomorrow is here. Tomorrow is here. So, we want to begin to listen to them. Not just listen to them, but let them take over. Let them take charge. Let them show us how they will do it when we're gone. Let them make their mistakes. Let's correct them. I'm excited. I'm a stickler for youths, for the next generation. And I'm so excited about what is about to happen tonight. My opening remark. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Be careful. Who you surround yourself with. My opening remark tonight. Surround yourself with the people that you want to look like. Surround yourself with the people that you want to rub off on you. Because you are the average of five people. The five people that you spend most of your time with. So please, don't underestimate the power other people's influence has on you. Do not underestimate it. The influence may be subtle, it may be sudden, but people have influence on you. So you cannot afford not to be intentional. Surround yourself with the people that you want to rub off on you. Don't underestimate the power of the influence that people have on you, whether you like it or not. Relationship, remember, relation, then ship. Every relationship transports you somewhere or transports something into you. That's the truth. That's the reality. That's the fact. If you don't want to look like it, please don't surround yourself with it. You are the average of the five people 
you spend most of your time with. The influence they have on you may be subtle and it may be sudden. But that there's no influence, forget it. People are influencing you. If you can look at it, you will look like it. If you can look at it, you are likely going to look like it. So be intentional. I have a very important announcement tonight. I'll say it now and then I'll say it maybe in the middle and at the end. Whew, 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 I'm excited. Some of you have been reaching out to my office, reaching out to me that you want me to coach you or to mentor you. I do different kinds of um, coaching and mentoring programs, but now by the grace of God, on October 2nd, and November the 6th, two days, three hours on each day, October 2nd, 2023, November 6th, 2023, three hours on each day, I'm going to be hosting as many of you as want to have a session with me. Two days mentoring program. Three hours I'll be with you. It's a virtual event. Registration will open on September 15th. Please take note on my website page www.funkefelixadejuma.org. Registration will open on September 15th for a two day mentoring program with FFA. I'm going to be as vulnerable as possible. You're going to be able to ask me any question. I'm going to coach you. I'm going to open up to you. I, I It's going to be mind-blowing. I'm telling you this. It's going to be mind-blowing. It's virtual. And we have limited slots. As soon as what I have in mind is fulfilled, then I'll tell them, I'll tell them to close <laughs> grammar. I'll tell them to shut down the registration. On my website, I'm going to pin it, you know, as soon as my um, guest takes off now, I'm going to pin where it will be on September 15th. Registration is not open yet. Registration will open on September 15th. It is not a free event you're going to pay. Until you are ready to commit time, money, attention hmm, to your life. It's an investment. And I'm going to be sharing some things with you. Some of you are asking, will it be one-on-one? -on -one? I'll tell you when we get to that event. You know, I have other one-on-one. -on -one. This is going to be a group program. It's going to be a group mentoring stroke coaching program for three hours. We'll be together virtually October 2nd for three hours and November 6th for three hours. Some of you are already asking me how much. Hey, ha, ha. You will get the details. You will see the details when registration opens. Whew, glory. Those of you that I have coached before, mentored before, I know some of you are here. Hmm. You need to invest into yourself. Life is dynamic in nature. You cannot just sit down and be praying and fasting and binding and losing. These things are good. I do them. But you've got to make investment in yourself. September the 15th, on my website, registration will open. Remember, October 2nd, and November 6th mentoring program with you. It's a blueprint, it's a template, and it's going to be hmm, worth it. Okay, so tonight I have hmm, someone that is representing the next gen share with us. She's a law graduate. <laughs> this girl, this young lady, is something else. You're going to be listening to her, you know, shortly. Her name is Dami Lola. I'm inviting her now. Uh, the smiley Dami. Okay. Oh, here she comes. When Dami Lola is in the room, you don't need Nepa. <laughs> Good evening, Ma. Good evening, sweetheart. I call on you. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. How are you doing? I am very, very fine. Thank you. Congratulations. Hey. Thank you very much, man. I don't want to. 
to say it, but let me say it. There's a time this girl, best graduating student in law. Hey, go girl. Go girl. You see how excited I am? Hmm? Yes, bro. Thank you very much, bro. We, the parents' generation, we are so proud of all of you. And we're so glad that, you know, you are making us proud. You want to, let's see your head a little bit, adjust your screen okay. so that, no, no. Oh, fantastic. You look so beautiful. Thank you so much. So, tonight, you are going to have the floor. Everybody send the uh, thank you. They are congratulating you already. Cameroon. Oh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. So you're going to have the floor. I'd like you to tell us a little about yourself and then just hit the ground running. We have like 11 questions or something, things that you want to speak to us about. And we are all ears, all ears. So who is that? Lela? That's the, that may be the only question I'm going to ask. Then we'll listen to you. Hello, everyone. My name is Oluwa Damilola Agbache. I am a recent graduate from Elizabeth University. I just graduated about two months ago. I am very passionate about building leadership skills and building capacity amongst young people like myself because I do believe that when we ask for change, we simply cannot just sit and ask for change. We need to demand, we need to work, and we also need to be collaborative. That means we need to also carry along other people around us. So that way, change is just psychic out. It starts from me, then it moves to you, and then everybody can move together, right? So that is something that I believe in. So I am, while I was in the university, I used to be a competitive debater. So I was the best speaker in Niger the best female speaker in Nigeria in 2019 and also in 2022 too. And I also ventured into a lot of other things. I write, I speak, I volunteer, I, um, what else do I do again? I also think that in our university spaces, there is need for us to make actual change. So I am an advocate for change in every capacity that I have been in and I have worked in. I met our beautiful mommy. I met her through the Elizabeth University. And within the law faculty, she has been a rock both to me and other people within the faculty. So she has done this directly by actually providing us help. She might not want me to say this, but so many, so many groups and clubs within the faculty, she gives us money, she gives us her time, she shows up to our events. And this is very, 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 very amazing for us because we understand the fact that she has a lot to do, but even with that, she's still showing up for us within the faculty. And for that, we really, really thank you, ma'am. I'm very, very grateful for the platform. And we at the Elizabeth Law Faculty, we are very, very happy to have you here. So today, I would like to talk about generational interface, building capacity, and being intentional. And after that, I'll just cap it up with networking like what mommy talked about, you are a sum total of the closest five people that are around you. And this is why you need to be intentional with those people that you surround yourself with. So when we now talk, start from generational interface, we first have to understand that at every single point that the world has existed, we have had different levels of generations trying to exist with each other. So we have, currently now we have um, the boomer generation, we have generation X, we have millennials, and we also have the one I, be um, I belong to, that is generation Z. Um, after generation Z, there's, I think there's generation alpha. So alpha is those that were born in 2010 down to now. So we have a lot of generations interfacing with each other and working together at the same time. And at the end of the day, we have those ones that have been able to go out into the world and actually make change. We have those ones that are coming up and we have those ones that they are still the children. Maybe. They are just enjoying their time and having the best of time within that particular space. However, in looking at generational interface, there is something that I like to call the subjectivity blind spot. So what this means is that because you belong to a particular generation, you really cannot understand how the other generations work. 
So now this is not because you are very lazy, you're not doing the work to find out or anything like that. This is simply because of the subjectivity of our experiences. So now somebody like mommy growing up in Nigeria, the experiences she had, are not going to be the experiences that I will have. So the way I'm going to look at life is going to be quite different from how she would look at life. Not because I choose to look at it differently, but simply because she was born in a different time and in a different age. So within that generational gap, there's also this thing where persons in a particular generation tend to believe that their generation is exceptional or just special compared to other generations definitely when when you're a part of something there's there's this pride that you have that yes i am i am gen z i am supporting gen z efforts and all of those things like that while this pride is good while this self-confidence in the generation is good the fact that we are all here together just means that there is a need to interface so now if we are not now intentional about interfacing then you start to interface from a point of being disadvantaged. And when you start off disadvantaged at the end of the day, it is not really good for anybody. So now I don't know if we are very, very familiar with social media. There are a lot of posts that people make almost every day about the Gen Z attitude to work. They can just say that, ah, I have this Gen Z person in my office. They act like this, they talk like this. They even with um even with capitalism, even with selling products. We notice that the way advertisers advertise to different generations is different. So for like boomers, they want to advertise based on stability. For persons in Gen Z, they want to advertise based on adventure. If you if you use this our products, you can be this, you can run around, you can have energy, all those things because of the fact that those things that we need differ from generation to generation. So in Nigeria today, even within the political space, there is this kind of pride that we Gen Z persons have, right? Because we think that the older generation have failed us and because of that, we need to be the ones that pick up the slack. So a lot of times we just complain about African parents and all of those things, right? So we think that we are the ones that are actually so different, right? Because we see each other, we understand each other, and we think we are so much better than the older ones. So this is not to say we are better or we are worse, but just to say that we think we are better because we exist within this particular generation. So with um, answers and a lot of agitations towards making the country better, sometimes some of us forget the historical background of where we are coming from so a lot of things that we've done today are things that other older people have also done in their own times i am not going to say they succeeded or they failed but just to just point out the fact that they did these things in their own times it is quite even admirable i would not really say admirable but it is interesting to know that a lot of the military leaders that nigeria had some of them were leaders at 30 25 27 so they started these things very 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 early right so for persons in generation z beyond thinking that we are better than the other generations right to make sustainable change there is a need to interface with other generations and to actually push these things further so now there's this thing they say about how you know luck is preparation needs opportunity every day we have vacuums there are vacuums everywhere there are power vacuums there are community vacuums there are societal vacuums even in the university there are so many vacuums that are just begging they are literally just begging to be filled these vacuums are begging to be to be filled say in your in your community you guys don't have i don't know maybe water you guys don't have young people are not going to school um very young girls are getting pregnant say the younger boys are not are not able to achieve their dreams there's no access to education there are so many vacuums around us and the thing about life is the fact that it is very very important to fill the vacuum wherever it is you find yourself so for a lot of people in the in the university structure or in the, within the university system there is a lot of leadership and there's a lot of volunteering you could be doing but a lot of us just feel like when we are done with university, we are going to be out in the world and we are going to be making change. But the thing about change is that change can always be today. You don't have to say, I have to graduate, I have to be this, I have to be that, I have to get to this particular 
point before I make the change. You can make the change now. And the change does not have to be such a big change. It can be very small change. And when people start to see that, oh, this person is doing this very small thing, this particular way, they don't want to know you. They want to know why you act like that. They want to know why are you being intentional? Did you see something that we cannot see? Like, what is your vision? What is, what is happening? You understand that, that kind of engagement. So this is how you qualitatively move forward. Because at the end of the day, you are still going to get to a position where you can make actual sustainable change so before you get there you have to make those smaller changes within your smaller environment what this does for you is that it makes you number one it makes you understand yourself more so say you volunteered for this particular leadership skill and you a um, leadership position and you realize that oh i get overwhelmed by a lot of tasks this is how this affects me then what you now do is that you try to solve that problem before the big things start and what you also build is that you build capacity you build trust you build you build that inter relation within your community your community can be anything your community can be your church you can you can volunteer to i don't know clean the church premises sing in the choir be an usher those things are things that build up your capacity because if you don't do hard things you will know how to do other hard things and the thing about doing hard things is that if you do one hard thing once and you succeed at it when you want to do another hard thing, you, you will tell yourself that, oh, I did this particular hard thing in the past. If I could have done that, then I can do this hard thing. So hard things just prepare you for harder things. Because at the end of the day, the truth is that things are not going to be simple at any point. So it is either you go out to the world and do the hard things without any form of preparation, or you are better prepared than those other people that are around you and i think that the choice that we would naturally want to make is the choice that you know propels us to do those things and make them more effective so like what we talked about what we talked about the case of networking the closest five people to you so now i would like to tell us how networking can be horizontal or vertical so when we talk about vertical networking vertical networking is networking up you are looking for mentors, you are looking for persons in the places that you want to break into that have done this thing in the past. So we have, you know, maybe you want to go into ministry, you are, you are talking to the men of God, you want to be a lawyer, you are talking to the judges, you are talking to the private law firms, you are talking to the maybe attorney general of the states, anybody you can network in. And now, horizontal networking, yeah, is networking amongst your peers. Networking amongst the peers. This seems a little. Why would I be networking amongst my peers? Like we are literally peers. Why am I networking amongst them? But the thing is that before you get to some places, you need some solid people behind you. That is just it. For you to be able to run some things, you need to have that space, those people that surround you. So within the law faculty, the truth is that. If I want to organize something tomorrow, tomorrow morning, just tomorrow morning, there are some people I can call this night and within one hour, two hours, we are going to pull it off by tomorrow morning. It is, it is, it is just, they are just that wonderful. You can just reach out to them and then they, they've done it. They've, and then the truth is that sometimes you might not even know the capacity of your friends if you're not even intentional with them. Mm. It's not just about, oh, okay, let's just go together, let's throw, let's go and buy food, let's go and um, talk to girls or talk to boys. Or you understand those kind of things? Because the truth is that with people who have succeeded in life, they have a lot of people on their neck. They cannot focus, they can't just sit down with you and focus with you one-on-one -on -one every day because they have so much to do so what you do is when you net and i'm not saying network with just anybody like just anybody you see on the road you're like ah, i want to network with you let's be networking together like that's not what i mean what i'm trying to say is that once you see capacity in people once you see that these people can actually get things done there are people around you no matter where you are 
either you're in secondary school, you're in university, you're done with university. There are people around you that you know that have done things. These things might not be very big things. They might, they might just be very small things. But you know people that do things and have done things. Those are people that you should surround yourself with. Another form of networking is networking downwards. And now, this is now the hardest one to justify. So why would you network with people that don't even have what you have or have not gotten to the position where you've gotten to? So like I said about that generational interface, right? It is easy for you to grow up and become disconnected from the world. Why? Because things are changing as you grow. So now that I just graduated from university, there are some new policies that we brought up for persons coming into under level that I will not know about. So what you do when you network with people that are less than you or younger than you or do not have the experience that you have is that they give you two things. First thing, they give you perspective oh. so that you understand what is still going on. First in perspective. Second thing is that they can provide the much needed ground information for you. See, once you, there are some kind of jobs that you need to get done, that you cannot get done on your own, that you cannot give your, your mentors, those ones above you. And you cannot even give it to those people on your level. You need to reach out to people that are younger than you are. And then the thing about responsibility and moving forward is that once you try to help other people move forward right those people that don't have as much as you have it also helps you move forward so you are checking on on them you are making sure they are being accountable to you while you are also being accountable to someone above you and while you are now collaborating with people on your level so on that way you are doing a three three tier thing right so what you're doing is that you are creating a system where in the future say someone in your in your in your collaborative network makes it now you guys already have a team on ground or you end up making it say you are even the one that makes it in life you have other people that that are under you that can learn something from you you have other people that will support you and you also have other people that can tell people of the things that you are capable of doing because sometimes you might just need people to just vouch for you yes this person this person has done this this person has helped me in this way before i met this person i was just like this but immediately after i met them they helped me do this they helped me do that and that is how we just move forward as a group right because at the end of the day there's the individual success and there's collective success okay. if you just it's not bad to be individually successful trust me it's not bad it is okay some people are very very good in individual success but when we can be successful as a collective it is just the best honestly because if you even know how to do something and you teach people that are younger than you, you get that happiness when you see that, oh, these guys are these guys are, are pushing through, these guys are doing these things, these are people I used to probably coach, these are people I used to talk to, I went to their school, I told them about about the why they should read, why they should all those things are things that are very, very important. So now, next thing we are going to be talking about is Okay, you talked. I just saw a question about how successful people don't help others because of betrayal from previous experiences and all of that. The truth is that most of us that we are young, we are not yet successful. <laughs> this is not to shame anybody. I'm, I'm 21. I don't have. I am not where I am. I, I want to be yet, right? And I might say that I am successful at doing X, Y, Z, but I will not say that I am already successful at life yet. Most of us, we we are not there yet. We are, that doesn't mean that people cannot betray you and things like that. The thing is that people are going to be different. You will find the good ones, you will find the bad ones, and you will find the ugly ones. Definitely, definitely, you are going to get betrayed. Definitely. You're going to, people are going to hurt you. People are going to do a lot of things. But just the most important thing is being able to carry on. Because even when people betray you, when you do things, other people are watching you. They are going to be testifiers to what you have done. If you are helping your community, like not everybody can just be betrayers. You just have maybe mm. what to do. And then everybody else that sees what you are doing. You understand? So at the end of the day, not everybody can just like betray, betray, betray and keep betraying. So now, 
I think that there's, it is very, very important to talk about wokeness. So on social media, in our daily life, we talk about being woke, the, the act of being woke. So sometimes people just do things and they say, ah, you're acting woke. You're, you're woke. This is the woke generation. So the general idea, the origin of the word, being woke just translates to being socially conscious. So now when you are asleep, we both know, we, when you are sleeping or when you are asleep, we know that you are in an unconscious state. You do not understand what is going on around you. So when you are woke, it just means that you have opened your eyes to those things that are around you. But just because of social media, the usage and everything, woke has now become an insult. Like, I will be saying something and like, ah, see this woke mm. saying something stupid. You understand? Even though the context of the world has changed, I think that there are lessons to be learned about wokeness, being conscious and being intentional. So a lot of times I talk to people about academic success and I tell them that the biggest thing that has helped me is being strategic with my academics. That is, that is just it really. Like for me, I, I'm very lucky that I at least got it very early. So as I got into school, my under level days, I actually sat down and I made a strategy. Okay, this is how I'm going to pass. This is how I'm going to do this. A lot of people, there's this big meme on TikTok about how um, your under level, they are like, ah, 70 is A, if I have 45 and I have. The truth is that it works for some people too. It's not just everybody that just like plans and then things just don't go as they should have gone. So, and then at the, end, at the end of the day, it is better to plan than to not plan. Because if you plan, yeah, there is always the, you always have that, at least you have a shield to prevent you from bad things that can happen. But if you don't plan, you don't even have any shield. And sometimes a lot of people say, okay, even if you plan this, plan that, a lot of unplanned things happen and then things can still go badly anyway. But the truth is that you still have a layer that is still at least helping you. So there's this analogy I like to give, right? Say you have a house now and your house has a door and a gate that you can lock. You're going out, you lock your door, you lock your gate, and then you leave your house. What you've done is that if there are armed robbers that have equipment to break down your door and break down your gates, definitely there's nothing you could have done. But if you have these small, small burglars who will sneak into your house and steal something, you have prevented that one. So what you are doing is that you are reducing, you are reducing the variables. So planning might not assure you you're going to get everything completely, but you are reducing the variables, you understand? So when we talk about planning, we talk about risk management, risk, risk assessment, we know that you cannot take away risk totally. There will always be risk, but you can also reduce it to the barest minimum. So that is what planning and being conscious does for you. So the next question is, how do we become woke? How do we become conscious? And how do we become more intentional? I think the first part is to know yourself and understand how you work. How does my brain work? How do I assimilate? How do I learn? How do I... All those things are very, very important questions to ask. So these days, I... I in my 300 level days, I got to understand that a lot of times when I want to read, it is best for me to be so comfortable. So a lot of times before I read, I get pillows, I stack them, stack them on the chair, stack them on the back of the chair, just get, can even buy myself things just to just keep me comfortable. And in that position, when I'm comfortable, I want to read more, I don't want to stand up, I don't want to get this, I'm not thinking about this, I'm not thinking about that. Even my brother even told me something one time about how sometimes if you want to read, you might even choose to clean your room so that everywhere looks neat, you just look around everywhere, like your brain is at, is at peace, you are at ease because you've understood that you work better in a clean 
an accessible environment. So for you to be able to plan anything, you need to first understand yourself. And when you understand yourself, you have to understand what you even want from life. And this is where we, we get to the very, very important part. Because the truth is that in life, if you don't know what you want, people that know what they want will tell you what you want. Let me say it again. If you don't know what you want, people that know what they want will tell you what you want. So what this means is that if you don't know where you are going, if you don't know what you want out of life, other people's parts will be looking very beautiful to you. And the thing about them is that they don't want to be lonely on their parts. So definitely they will tell you, ah, follow me, let's go here, let's go there, let's... And you, you don't also have any way of going. So it's like, instead of staying in one place, why don't I follow them? And then you just follow them. And then after a couple of years, you just find out that probably you are not as happy as you, you should be. You're not making the change you think you should be making and other things like that, right? So you just wake up and discover that ah, for a long time, you have been following a path that is not yours. The truth is that with the older generation and older people, most of the time, they want the best for us. And the advice that they give us comes from a place of love and care. They want us to see, they want to see us do well. But at the end of the day, the only person that knows you is you. Oh. You are the best person to know what you want. You know where you fit in. You know, there's this man is an economist is um david ricardo and he talks about the theory of comparative advantage so i'll do a small history lesson so we first have adam smith that's um father of economics he started absolute advantage so the theory of ad absolute advantage just says that if i'm country a and country a can produce beans and country b can produce rice country a should just focus on producing rice and country b should focus on producing rice so because of that country a will sell rice to country b and country b should will sell beans to country a so that's absolute advantage you are absolutely good at something focus on it but then then this guy david ricardo came to also help out the theory by bringing out comparative advantage so comparative advantage says that sometimes country a can produce rice beans flour and so many other things but there will be something that country a can produce at the cheapest price probably because of the geographical location of country a probably because of whatever that country uniquely has access to it can do a lot of things but it can do that thing at the cheapest possible rates and most effective so it's not saying that even though there are so many things you could be doing or oh, but there's this particular thing that you know that you are uniquely equipped to do and because of that you should focus on that thing that you are uniquely equipped to do and i think that that is a lesson that can apply to everyone we have to understand what can i do the big question is what can i offer what do i have that somebody beside me does not have what how, how was i trained was i was i um trained to be vocal was I trained to write down my thoughts? Like, what can I do? On Twitter, sometimes, you will just see some people, they will just write some threads. Even though you had that idea in your brain, but there's a way they will write it that you are just writing what you have in your head. Although you have it in your head, but you cannot put it down the way they can put it down on, on paper. There are some people, they can, they can speak. There are some people they can build things they can they can just see something now and they'll be like ah if if i want to do this thing i can take this take this put it together and then i can get something good some people are builders some people are thinkers some people some people are even networkers some people they're so nice you just see them and then everybody likes them they are just so likable it's like ah this person they have 10 million friends everybody has nothing wrong to say about them. Not everybody would be a talker. Not everybody. Every so you can even be someone that is very quiet. You're very quiet. But when you do what you do, people, people stop. People look at you and like, 
how does this person do it? How, how do you achieve those things? And the truth is that even if you don't know what you are good at, try out a wide variety of things. You don't know until you try. There are so many, there are so many things out there. The fact that you don't know doesn't mean it doesn't exist. You just don't know yet. Do you understand? You try, you try, you try, you try, you try until you find something that sticks. So now, personal, personal story. When I was in university, the with law, what we do at the university level is that we get bachelors of law. So what they do is that they generally teach you just the specific things about law. So you go to the law school, you um, graduate from the law school, then you are called to the bar. Then after being called to the bar, you can do general practice. That means practice on anything. You can specialize, you can go for your master's, you can do anything you want to do, really. So while I was in entry level, I, I was already even thinking about, ah, people will come and ask me, what will you do? What do you want to specialize in? I did not know. 200 level, I did not know. 300 level. And then one, one of those times, I just by mistake, it was even by mistake. So I was supposed to be offering a course. The name of the course is um, Intellectual Property Law. And for some reason, the test came and I did not do very well in the test. And then I was just looking at it that will I stay with this course that I didn't do well and let the course spoil my CGPA? So I went to offer an elective. The elective was International Humanitarian Law. We, it wasn't just me that didn't do so good in that test where a huge number of us didn't do very well. And we're just joining that course like late time in the semester because we didn't even know we we're going to change. And I started doing it and I was like, ah, I like this thing though. Exam period came, I was just, I sat down for hours. I still remember um, in the library, in the, we have a virtual library so you can use the internet, read journals. I remember sitting down for more than eight hours. I was just reading this thing. And I just liked it. And immediately I came in contact with this course. I knew that this was something I cared about. And before then, that was something that was giving me a headache. If I had not yet encountered it, I would not have known that, okay, this is what I want to do. And then your visions also can even change. You can do something today and then you see something tomorrow and you find out that this thing is even more in tune with my lifestyle. This is what I should be doing. And it is okay. It is okay to change. See, a lot of people can just come to you and be like, oh, but you were doing X, Y, Z last year. Last year is even far. Yesterday, last week, you were doing this, you were doing that. And you can tell them that, yes, it is okay to change. I have, I have found fulfillment. I have found, I have found satisfaction. I have found, I believe that I am, I, am, I am creating change. I believe that I am doing something to help out the world, help out myself from that very, very small place that you are starting from. And at the end of the day, the truth is that people don't have to understand. The only person that needs to understand is you. Even your parents, you can even explain it to them. You explain, ah, mommy, this is, this, this. Is. They might not understand. But the thing about doing things is that when you do it and you give it passion and they start to see that you are making change, they might still not understand, but then they will accept you. So while I was in university, my mom was very much against the concept of me doing debates. She did not like it because of the fact that we had to travel from state to state. We traveled around the country. I have gone to, I've gone to Calabar, we have gone to Lagos, we have gone to Ogo State. So many debates can happen anywhere. And then you just pack people up, enter bus, let's go to this particular location. So my mom did not like it. But there was a particular tournament that we went for and um, we won our categories and even before we got to school we were published in the newspapers and everybody was celebrating us Remember as a school i graduated from my mother's school at the secondary school level by the time i got home I, I discovered that the next flyer for the next session they put that on the flyer so <laughs> I, I just could not tell her that but you said that i should not do this thing but at the end of the day i did it i then she could understand that this is what I love. This is what I want to do. This is what I'm interested in. 
So for somebody like me, a lot of the time, people can tell you, people will say different things. People are, even as I have seen track, because obviously I'm not yet where I am supposed to be right now, but I am trying my best. I am putting in some effort. I am also, you know, trying to reach out to the people who have done the things I want to do. And still people don't still understand a couple of weeks back when I just graduated from school, there was a particular person that was saying, ah, what is all these things that you are doing? How much do you have in your account? How much have you made? How many people do you know? And then I was not even, most people were surprised that I was not bothered by that. And I wasn't bothered because I know that this is not the time for me to even start chasing money yet. Because the thing about money is, is it's very it's very transitory. Money is very transitory. You, you you can look into your account now. You have money, and five minutes later you made a purchase. You don't have it again. Money is very very transitory. And the thing is that money at the end of the day is nothing in itself. The only reason why money is important is because of what we can use money to do. And what we use money to do, we use money to chase satisfaction, we use money to chase happiness, we use it for our basic needs, food, shelter, all those clothing. So there are even some of us, not all of us, because I won't just, I won't just, you know, just say that all of us. There are some of us that those basic needs are needs that your parents are already providing at that particular point food you're not hungry clothing you have clothes to wear shelter you have your mother and your father's house to go back to so why this is important is that they are giving you time they are giving you leverage see at this time you don't have to think of oh i'm going to eat tomorrow i don't know what i will eat you don't have to think of that because you already have someone that is providing that you might not have the enough money to buy the latest latest anything you want to buy but at the end of the day, these things are things that are still transitory at the end of the day. It's not as if if you don't buy it, you are going to lack or anything like that. You understand? So if you have people who can provide those things to for you, what they give you is audacity to follow your dreams. Because the truth is that there are also young people that don't have access to these things. They are, they are very young people that they are 18 and then they are the ones fending for their families too. So they don't have the liberty to fail that they don't have it they just have to just succeed but for some of us we have that license to fail i'm not saying that oh you should just go to the world and say oh i'm going to go and fail the best thing is prepare for success but if you fail review your failure and move on what young people have is time we have time we have that energy that other older people don't have for a lot of older people who you see that they have all this money, they have these resources, they didn't just get, they didn't just wake up one day and they were like, ah, oh my God, I'm going to leave money. And then just have a bunch of money. You, you can't just wake up one day and just have everything. It's just important. Even if you are failing, you are succeeding, you are moving forward. There is a concept called failing forward. So say you do thing A now, and maybe it doesn't work out the way you want it to work out. But you've done it, you've had the experience, and you're going forward into other things. And the thing is that things stack up. Nothing is on its own. Things just stack up. So say you volunteered as a secondary school. Now say secondary school, you went to them, you spoke to them for like a day, you talked to them about maybe life in university, something very small, something that all of us can offer students in secondary school. You go and meet them, talk to them about, okay, when you get to university, this is what you will see, this is how lecturers teach, this is how they engage, all of that. You go there, you talk to them today. Tomorrow, you can still go back even to you, into your university, learn some things from how you talk to the secondary school people and also talk to university students like that like that you're you're stacking up you're stacking up things that things are moving forward you're stacking up and you're moving forward and i think that this is these are important things that we need to know at the end of the day right we talk about we need change we want our society to change and everything but change is not automatic change is intentional like I said, change is not automatic. It is intentional. Somebody somewhere has to put in the work for the change to happen. So why can't that somebody be you? Think of it. 
just think of it like those people that are actually the people that are making the change that was so different that's just the truth there was something that i posted on my snapchat a couple days back and i just shared with the people on there that one of the things that motivates me in life is that a lot of people who are successful can also be very mediocre oh. but they were intentional they gave it the work the truth is that a lot of people talk about how okay you know first class is not necessary for success and all of that it is good to to be academically intelligent and everything but if you don't have consistency and you are not intentional you will see people that you have more people that you are smarter than people that you know more than people that you know that you guys are not of the same capacity they are out in the world they are building things they are making things they are making change and you know ah, this person if, if they put us together i, I will be them on hands down but it's only you that knows nobody out there really really knows about it you understand because things like education getting the degree those are things that just equip you for the outside world really because at the end of the day when people talk about how the fact that you have a good education does not mean you make it to the world true but there's still a form of correlation because when you are educating yourself there are, there are things we call transferable skills so transferable skills are skills that once you use them in a particular thing you can transfer them to other things so transferable skills that you gain from from education there are things like consistency there are things like focus there are things like being able to actually stick to something and finish it those are things that you learn from education and another thing about education is it teaches you diligence it teaches you things like punctuality the fact that you have to go to classes by 10 you have to go to classes by 8 you have to have 70 percent attendance you have to do this then it also teaches you honesty right being being able to write your exams without cheating all those things are things that lets you gain a lot of transferable skills these are skills that you will need so the fact that you make it in the educational sector is not like ah i'm going to go into the world and i'll be the richest person but just that you are more prepared than other people in that particular category and that is exactly what you need for you to get better and then another thing is the fact that any space that you are in, you need to make a difference so that people within those spaces will see what you carry, what you have. Do you understand? Because the thing about change, the thing about being intentional is that there is no way they can cover you. Nobody can cover you. Nobody, nobody, they might not like you. They might betray you, like somebody said earlier. They might be jealous of you. They might, you might not even be a good person. Mm -hmm. Maybe you see them, you don't greet them. I'm not saying don't go and be, and don't be greasy people and be rude. You might not greet them, you might not be nice to them. But they will say, oh, you are rude. But you get things done. Do you understand? They will say, they will definitely say it about you. They might be like, ah, this person, I don't like her. She's proud. She's this. But if you ask her to do X, Y, Z, she will get it done. A very, very good analogy is how a lot of times during the semester, during the academic year, some people will not talk to each other. They won't greet you. They won't, you see them, they walk past. But exam season, one week to exam, there are some people that that is when they will remember that you are alive. They will text you off, send me this thing, send me this material. They will be, they will be nice to you because they know that you are exactly what they need at that particular point you understand i'm not saying that oh okay just be um transactional in your relationship so i'm not trying to say that but i'm just trying to put it out there that once you have those things people are going to come around you you understand so now the big questions that we also want to ask is what are the likely challenges that we might have in pursuing these goals because at the end of the day the world is a big place and then it is very very easy to get swallowed up a good a, 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 a thing that can happen is okay say lack of funds i want to do this i don't have money i don't have the money that is needed i don't i saw a tweet yesterday night on twitter about um upcoming artists the music business now 
you need a lot of money you need to promote you need to maybe put your songs on tv you need to maybe do snapchat ads do twitter ads a lot of people don't have that money and then the person just said that the only thing you can do is to use the small resources that you have to do things within your power because we all understand that financial status is something that will change at some point it's not where you are today is not where you are going to be forever so what you do is that when you don't even have the all the money you need now you're doing what you want to do on a small scale what you're doing is you're gathering experience you want to be you want to be in the house of assembly go and join your if your faculty has a legislative house join them you want to do politics your faculty has an executive house join them you you, you want to do business you want to be importing and exporting still sell small small things sell sell shades sell i don't know anything that people around you need find a need fill it in your own small capacity you want to give out to people you want to be a philanthropist but you don't have 10 million dollars probably somebody doesn't even have i don't even know maybe a textbook or something something that is not even as expensive as five thousand naira. you give it to them and then you have done something you've impacted them some way so at the end of the day the best thing is to cut your dreams cut your dreams into smaller sizes you're not just reducing the value of your dreams but you're just making it easier for you to approach your dreams so like i said today as we we as generation z most of us here are gen z but that doesn't mean that all of us are gen z we just have to understand that it is important to integrate it is important to network it is important to understand your dreams it is important to follow them and then it is also important to cut your dreams down into bite size sizes and go after them thank you very much for oh, oh the audience my. thank you to everyone for listening and for being available today i i'm happy that i was able to have this talk today thanks to everyone thank you damina our also reading some comments practice must marry you by fire by force moving <laughs> oh my god fantastic thank you so so very much different comments people are blessing your mother god bless the womb baby see beauty and brain and all that what a blessing. i did it intentionally brought you here because i know you have one. and this is just one out of the many times that i will still bring you thank you so so very much for the blessing to run. Thank you, every everybody from everywhere, Japan, you know, <laughs> global family. Thank you. Um, this will be on my page for the next 24 hours, and then I'll move it to YouTube. This is for life. This is a gem. I'm sure you are reading the comments too. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you so very much. Um, let me, then I'll, I'd like to remind you, because some of you have reached out to me, out to my office. Want me to mentor you? You want me to coach you? You have the opportunity. Registration will open on my website page. That's why I've put it there. From kefelixadijuma.org on September fifteenth. September the fifteenth. Registration will open. Two day event: October second and November the sixth. For three hours each day, I will be in your space. It's a virtual program and it is a paid program you pay for it but you are going to be late for this so please watch out for the next program blueprint event is virtual today event ffa three hours that's six hours i'll be in your space and i'll be as vulnerable as the ball um october 2nd and november the 6th registration opens on september the 15th people are asking what it is you want to quickly type that damnola your handle the smiley underscore dummy the smiley the smiley underscore dummy that's a handle please go follow her um i will have done that the smiley. Have you written it? 
yes ma'am and um if you if you just drag just above your screen you can just drag down and you just see me up there see my name beside mommy's name and then you can just follow me straight from there thank you very much smiley m-i-l-e-y m-i i have yes i mentor everyone do you mentor me or just feeling everyone i have people in mind i have executive club i have men i have women once we're a human being, I don't mentor everybody. Mentor in people that influence all the people. people that have, have a future. People that, you know, let's not even talk about that. So please, if you go on my page, you will say that. God bless you, everyone. It's been a fantastic time. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Nola. Greetings to your parents. And go and matter. Yes. Again, thank you for being a blessing. Good night, yes. everyone. Good night. Smiley, you see the way she's smiling. The smiley on the damn Let's good night. Bye. Yes, good night. Bye.